When we attach the modifier .animation.default to a view, SwiftUI will automatically animate any changes that happen to that view using whatever is a default system animation. In practice, that is an ease in, ease out animation, which means iOS will start the animation slow, make it pick up speed, then slow down as it approaches its end. We can control the type of animation used by passing in different values to the modifier. For example, we could use dot ease out to make the animation start fast, then slow down to a smooth stop. Dot animation dot ease out. There are even spring animations that cause the movement to overshoot, then return to settle at its target. You can control the initial stiffness of the spring, which sets its initial velocity when the animation starts, and also how fast the animation should be damped. Lower values cause the spring to bounce back and forth for longer. For example, this makes our button scale up quickly, then bounce. Dot animation, dot interpolating spring, stiffness 50, Damping 1. For more precise control, we can customize the animation with a duration specified as a number of seconds. So we could get an ease in out animation that lasts for two seconds, like this. Dot animation, dot ease in out, duration 2. When we say dot ease in out duration 2, we're actually creating an instance of an animation struct that has its own set of modifiers. So we can attach modifiers directly to the animation to add a delay, like this. Animation dot ease in out duration 2 dot delay 1. You'll notice that we explicitly have to say animation.easeinout now, because otherwise Swift isn't quite sure what we mean. Regardless, tapping the button will now wait for a second before executing a two second animation. We can also ask the animation to repeat a certain number of times, and even make it bounce back and forward by setting auto reverses to true. So we could create a one second animation that will bounce up and down before reaching its final state. Dot repeat count, three, auto reverses, true. If we had set repeat count to two, then the button would scale up, then down again, then jump immediately back up to its larger scale. This is because ultimately the button must match the state of our program, regardless of what animations we apply. When the animation finishes, the button must have whatever value is set in animation amount. For continuous animations, there is a repeat forever modifier that can be used like this. Repeat forever, auto reverses true. We can use these repeat forever animations in combination with on appear to make animations that start immediately and continue animating for the life of the view. To demonstrate this, we're going to remove the animation from the button itself and instead apply it to an overlay to make a sort of pulsating circle around the button. So first add this overlay modifier to the button. Dot overlay, circle, dot stroke, color dot red, dot scale effect, animation amount, dot opacity, double, two minus animation amount. That makes a stroked red circle over our button using an opacity value of two minus animation amount so that when animation amount is one, the opacity is one, it's opaque. And when animation amount is two, the opacity is zero, it's transparent. Next, remove the scale effect modifier from the button and comment out the animation amount plus equals one action part two, because we don't want that to change anymore. And move its animation modifier up to the circle inside the overlay. 
I've switched auto reverses to false, but otherwise it's the same animation. Finally, add an on appear modifier to the button, which will set animation amount to 2. Dot on appear, self dot animation mount equals 2. Because the overlay circle uses that for a repeat forever animation without auto reversing, you'll see the overlay circle scale up and fade out continuously. Given how little work that involves, it creates a remarkably attractive effect.